Glory. How y'all doing on tonight? God bless you. Y'all come on in. Come on in on tonight. Brother Scott, good to see you. God bless you. Good to have you all on tonight. Y'all come in and share. Hello, brother. God bless you. Sister Felicia J. God bless you. One of my faithful followers as well. I see you catch the replay. I see you uh, on lives as well. Good to have you on as well, sis. Brother Sky, it's good to see you. Y'all come in and announce yourself. Those of you, I'm not trying to miss over you because I see it comes in and I miss it. Answer the call. Prophet is chosen. What is that, Raquel? I've been seeing you on the past uh, past few lives. I, I believe you've been getting this word. You've been enjoying this word. And nothing but God blessings to you. I've been I've been seeing you. I may not acknowledge it, but there comes a time when I keep when I keep seeing y'all come on. Uh, I, I'll eventually acknowledge it. So I've been seeing you get this word since I've been I've been watching you, you know, and, and come on and uh, being blessed. And it's nobody but God. And so I just thank God for the increase to the ministry and the numbers. And one thing my, my spiritual father taught me, he told me that one, what we get so caught up in numbers, you know, people, what they do is they get so caught up in a, a bunch of followers, like thousands of followers. And people think, people think because numbers, that success, success is not in the numbers. See, a lot of what we do is we start counting the members, but you got to look at how many of those people count. How many of those people go really getting fed? How many of those people are really important into your ministry? How many people are genuine? How many of them are sincere? You know, how many are, are, are critics and you know what I mean? Gossipers, naysayers. We, we count numbers. You count members, but how many of them count? And that's what people do with ministry. They look at how many sit in the pews, but how many of them count? How many of them faithful? Can you count on them? Can, can they lay their life down for you? You know, if something was to go wrong, can you can you count on them to stand in the gap? In the midst of why you sick, in the midst of why you bound and messed up. Can they stand in the gap? Can they cover you until you recover? So a lot of people, they look at the numbers, they think that success, that, that success is not in numbers. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because you get so caught up in, in numbers that you lose sight of Jesus. You get so caught up in the mega ministry and the height to get people to hoop and holler. It's not in that. And, and that's what we do. That's what happens in the body of Christ. I'm not going to single nobody out. I'm going to say we. Because it's, it's as a body of Christ, we are a whole. You know, many members, but one body. We are a whole. So you can't single somebody else. So if, if something affects Brother Sky, it affects me too. Because we are one as a body of Christ. So, it, it, and it's to somebody, and I want to just encourage you in this. That... Don't get well and, uh, and don't, don't get weary and well doing, but also do not despise the day of small beginnings. Just because something's small, just because you may be ministering and teaching and it's just one person on. It's just one person. But don't get discouraged because of that. Because it's God that gives the increase. Amen. So don't worry about how many people are watching you. I guarantee, I guarantee you that somebody is getting fed somebody somebody is getting an impartation through the spoken word do you understand so it's not about increase i would be on here i remember when i started on here i mean it was really just a faithful few and you some of y'all wasn't on here but it was like a sister keisha and different people back then like star and some of them know uh, some of them know who I'm, who I'm talking about i mean I don't, what's understood ain't really got to be explained but there's some of y'all that was on here and y'all they'll watch the replay uh, like Sister Keisha, Brother Anthony, they was on here where very few people was watching my scopes. You know, and then what God did when I started to get revelation and I started seeking God and I was sincere about the word, God started adding an increase. So what he started doing was he started drawing the people. As the word of God said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So it's not about how many people you got on your scope. It's not about how many people come and, and sit in the pews. It's not if you can feel, if you can pack out the conference. 
It's not about that. I'm telling y'all, a lot of people are tricked because they think just because, say, uh, for example, on Periscope, because you see it full and it's like 2,000, 3,000 people on there, don't be fooled by that. Because how many of those people count? Half those people are critics. They're ready for you to say something wrong. Some of them are non-believers. Some of them, I mean, listen, listen, some just, they don't have enough faith. Some are religious. Just because you see numbers, that does not mean anything. So I just wanted to say that. God's also said in this world, where there's two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Don't you know that God can do more in a small crowd than what he can in a big crowd? You understand? So I don't do nothing special over here. Only thing I do is minister the gospel. That's what I do. I don't try to draw and give gimmicks and I don't have oils and you know handkerchiefs. I don't have none of that. I don't have uh, I don't have the prosperity prophecy where you can sow to get your prophecy and if you sow a thousand dollars, God gonna release a mega anointing. I, I'm not even gonna play with God like that. I, I I'm not one of those kind of preachers. For one, first off, I teach. I don't preach. You know what I mean? And first off, it ain't me anyway. It's him. It's God that teaches. It's him that preaches. It's him that prophesies. I'm just a vessel. I'm the willing vessel. Being poured out like a bottle, away, man. But anyway, going to flow without fail on tonight. Brother Travis Miller here. want to come on and encourage you. This is the Midnight Cry. We teach God's people. And we do what God asks us to do. And be obedient. And I, I want to come on tonight. And I want to talk about breaking identity confusion. And I want to talk about how I got this word. And God began to download into me as I was getting ready for church one day. And he began to download into me and brought me back to my teenage years when I was in high school. How I used to, you know, back then, I used to want to always be somebody else. I used to always want to be somebody I wasn't. And some of you did the same thing. I mean, I think this was just like a phase. You know, as teenagers, we go through different phases that we want to be like everybody. We want to be the, the biggest rapper. We want to be the biggest football star. You know, some of you cheerleaders, basketballs, you want to be like Mike, as they say. So I was one of those teenagers that always, I always copied the, the, the next big influence, you know, in the generations of who was the come, who was the big baller the shot caller, whoever it was. So I was in a place where I didn't really know who I was. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know myself, you know, because I was trying to find my way into this world. I was just confused about everything. You know what I mean? Confused all in my mind. It was bad enough that I was battling anxiety and depression. So I was always caught up in wanting to be somebody else. I always wanted to be this person and be that person. And I never sat down to figure out who I was. And this probably right here, what this does is to some of you, it brings you back to where you were when you was a teenager, when you was in grade school and high school and, you know, how you was picked out to be picked on. Some of you were picked out to be picked on. And you know what I mean? You were rejected a lot and persecuted and abandoned. You know, some of you went through that. You know, you, was, you went through a place where you had to watch your, your father beat your mother. You went through a place where you had to watch mother on addiction and dad on addiction and doing drugs and you were from family member to family member's house and some of you didn't have places to stay i mean you went to sleep hungry woke up hungry all that kind of stuff some of you know what it's like back in those childhood days you understand so i'm gonna bring some stuff up tonight because it's going to help you with the revelation about breaking our book about breaking the identity confusion it's really going to help somebody because it's going to help you to discover who you are. It's going to help you tap into a gift that you didn't know was there. Many of you have already been anointed and appointed. You just don't know it yet because there hasn't been anybody to pull on a gift that's what's inside of you. That's why we say, God, put me around people who are going to pull something out of me that I didn't know was there. Put me around people that's going to sharpen the gift on my life. As the word of God says, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. So if you're prophetic, some of you want to be in a prophetic. If you're prophetic, get around people who, who got eyes to see, ears to hear in the spirit realm. 
So God has to connect you with somebody to pour something out of you that you didn't know was there. I'm talking about another level of faith, another level of greatness, gifts that are undiscovered. Okay. So what God had to do, God downloaded into me and brought me back to my childhood years when I was battling identity confusion. I didn't know who I was who wanted to be. I didn't know if I wanted to be Vietnamese. <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted to be a rapper. I didn't know if I wanted to be a raver, a drug dealer. The enemy had me up on such of a like a spirit of, of deception. I wanted to be everything else but myself. And that's how the enemy had me. So God began to quicken me with this message to minister to the people, to tap into who you are on tonight, to discover who you are. And this is how God had to bring me back to a place of remembrance so you can see where you came from. So I, I thank God for this message on tonight because it really deals with deception. You understand? You don't have to live a lie. As Apostle Paul called the revelation, he says, do not think yourself highly than what you ought to. He was speaking to the Corinthian church or the Galatians uh, which one ever, uh, I'm not really sure. Just paraphrase it. He says, do not think of yourself more than what you ought to. How many of us exalt ourselves? You thinking more of what you ought to. You're thinking you're somebody when you're not. Y'all quiet. So what this message is going to do right here is going to break down deception in your lives. Ain't it crazy how we could be living a life and that not even be, that's that's not our life. We be living a lie the whole time. Some of us haven't discovered who we are. So we're walking around confused. Always pointing fingers at people. Yeah, we were molested. Yeah, we, yeah, we dealt with things, you know, in our childhood. You know, yeah, you might battle like homosexuality because you was raped as a child by your auntie, auntie, by your uncle or whatever. You know, there are seeds that have started. But this word right here right now is a tell out deception. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to live broken. You can tap into who you are. So this message right here is going to also mend some people, the anointing. And what God has to do is God places oil on somebody's life to put you back together, to help you, help you. So you, you won't be living a lie. You won't be walking in deception. But I had a word. Go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. We're going to flow with our fellow tonight. I thank y'all for coming in. Thank you for your hearts as well. I really appreciate it. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. He says, So God created mankind in his own, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female, and he created them. So we were created in his image. He didn't say our image. How many of us are so self-willed? We want to create up our own image. So a lot of people, we say, okay, we, we want to be something. We, we, want to, we want to be like everybody else. But we don't want to be like Jesus. Y'all talk to me on tonight. So he says, I created mankind in his own image. I created you in my image. Do you know who I created you to be like? So if you was to really tap into the identity of who you are, you won't be trying to think you somebody else. You won't be trying to exalt yourself. You wouldn't be trying to think so highly of yourself. Let's go back to what I was saying. Apostle Paul says, that don't think you're ought to, or don't think you're higher than what you ought to. Sorry for the stutter. Don't think of yourselves higher than what you ought to. So how many of us think we something when we not? How many of us are walking in deception? Many remember, like I was saying, this goes back to our childhood. So this message right here may open up wounds, but it's to address something you never did. What God has to do is. God has to take you back to the root of a thing. He takes you back to the root. 
so you can understand why you do things the way you do it, why you think things the way you think, why you mean, why you nasty, why you backbiting. Why is it so hard for you to break a double kobashi? Glory. God is quickening me. Why is it so hard for you to break addiction? Familiar spirit. Daddy was a drunk. Mother was a drunk. Now you a drunk. These spirits will grip generations. These spirits will grip a generation. So now you don't understand why you always lie. Your father was a liar. These are familiar spirits. God, I ask you, God, on the boko by shape. God, I ask you right now to, to, to dismantle this stuff at the root. God, I ask you right now to cast down every familiar spirit. Things that were imparted from my mother's house, my family house. Everything that was passed down from generation to generation, dismantle it, remove it. In the name of Jesus. Every familiar spirit. So I'm saying we try to understand why are things hard to break? Why is there no liberation? Why are there no marriages? You understand? Why every female in the family is from is, is from man to man? These are spirits that have gripped the generation. Why is every every young child raised up and want alcohol? These are familiar spirits that grip us. So we say, God, remove the familiar spirits. Remove this stuff that's not like you. Everything that's daboko basha, everything that's trying to mimic your spirit and it's not like you, remove it because there are mimicking spirits. They try to mimic God. We tap into our identity in this season. We find out who we are in the spirit. So people see who you are in the natural, but they have no idea who you are in the spirit. They have no idea who God called you to be. So if some of you can grasp this message on tonight, I'm going to tie the revelation in. I'm going to tie this revelation in and it's really, it's really going to, it's going to help you. It's going to tie in with the title. This, this right here, this is the season that we tap into who we are in God. That you tap into, into your DNA. That you tap into the undiscovered gift, this undiscovered oil that's in the depths of your, your soul ready to be poured out. As he told prophet Jeremiah, I'm going to build this foundation. I knew you before your mother even conceived you to be a prophet unto a nation. This man was already chosen before his mother even conceived him to be a prophet. So now guess what? Jeremiah tapped into who he was. He knew he was already called because God let him know. So how many of us haven't tapped in, into who we are? We haven't tapped into our identity. We're still in identity confusion. We break that tonight in Jesus' name. We come against it by the power of the Holy Ghost. So we be free from identity confusion and we come about a deception. So we can know who we are. So we can tap into our true identity. Genesis 1 and 27, he says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. And male and female, he created them. So we know that. We were created by God. God bless you, Anna. We were created by God. So we understand where we came from. Do many of you understand? Do many of you understand your identity? Who created you? Of who your father is? Do you know who your father is? It's God. So I'm, I'm not worried about what man calls me. <laughs> Blessings to you. I'm not worried about what man calls me. What man calls me, that, that might not be who I am. What you want me to be, that might not be who I am. So how many people have you allowed to enter into your lives and let you think you're somebody when you're not? They labeled you as something, but that's not who God called you to be. That's why you got to be careful what titles people put on you. 
You got to be careful what people label you. So what, 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 did, what does God call you? Who does he call you? Who are you in the spirit? Do you know the value? You know the hidden treasure? He says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That's Bible. I didn't write that. That's not my words. I got that from the word. The Holy Spirit just gives it to me. Some of you have this same word. You just don't, you don't know how to tie in revelation to tap into who you are. Say, God, download into me so I can get a word for the nations. Amen. So we are created in his image and after his likeness in God's image. So why are we let people put labels on us? Why are you answering the titles that God didn't ordain? Y'all talk to me on tonight. Let's tap into who you are. Let's break identity confusion in this season. That we discover who we are. Many of you walking around don't know who you are. You don't understand the anointing on your life. You don't understand the mantle, the oil that's flowing through you. Many of you don't understand that God chose you before birth. Before your mother even conceived you. So why are we walking around confused? Why are we walking around in deceptions? God, Rambo Kobashe, God, remove the scales. Remove the scales so we can see who we are. You understand? It's a season that we tap into God. You've been tapping into everything else, but it ain't God. So he said, I created you after my image and after my own likeness. So you, it's not about what other people call you. Do you know who you are? What do you answer to? That's going to be your name if you keep answering to the wrong thing. Many of you answering the stuff that God didn't call you. What did God call you in secret? Are you listening to what the enemy's saying? I'm a failure. I'm going to be broke. I'm going to be depressed. What is the enemy speaking to you that got such a spirit of deception up on you that you believe in a lie? Why are you believing lies when you serve the father of truth? Do you understand? The opposite of truth is a lie. Don't you realize there's a lie that can be, trolled, uh, be told, but it's going to take only God to tell you it's not the truth. There's a lie that can be, that can be so good and so sugar-coated. There's lies that can be wrapped with the truth, but the center of it is a lie. So there's a lie that can be told, but it's going to tell God to tell you that it's not the truth. So this is the season that we break deception. That's that we say, God, send the spirit of truth. God, break the identity confusion. God, I'm confused about who I am. God, I got two or three different titles. God, let me tap into you in this season. Let me discover the oil in my life. So I don't have to think I'm everybody else. I don't, I don't have to think that I'm something that I'm not, that you didn't ordain for me to be. You can't be a prophet and a Jehovah Witness at the same time. That's not going to happen. You assign the three or four spiritual fathers at a time. You can't do that. Serve one father. You understand. If God has anointed you, be who God called you to be. Why are we flocking to what man says we are? Man will confuse you more than anything. David caught the revelation. He said, God, don't deliver me over to the, uh, the, uh, the will of man. Man is cruel. Man is messed up. Man will have you thinking you everything else but in God. <laughs> so we got to tap into who God called us to be. Amen. Real quick scripture. And I'm going to close on this. We're going to flow. It's about breaking identity confusion. Really good word because I think we need this. Discover who you are. Tap into Jesus in his hour. Be sure of your calling. 
Know who called you. Begin to examine yourself. Say, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? So I'm saying, I went back. I had to, God brought me back. And this God always does this. Every now and then when he wants me to change up the message. You don't never know how I'm going to teach. And uh, that's how God has me. You know, he, he'll have me teaching on one thing. And he threw a curveball about identity confusion. And he brought me back to way back when I was in grade school. How when I was a raver, listened to techno music, had a love for ecstasy. Didn't pop it all the time, but had a love for it. You know what I mean? Real big partier. You know what I mean? Pop, uh, I was very popular. You know, had popularity. But in the midst of all that, I was still battling identity confusion because I didn't know who I was. I wanted to be everybody else. I was trying to be cool, trying to be known, trying to stunt, sold a little bit of weed, had a little bit of money, trying to be the, the, the number one dope dealer. Confused at who I was because this is what I was taught that it was okay to be like this. I was taught that it was okay to try to be like the next man. To be the, the next big popular person. To be the next big football star. I thought it was okay. And God showed me at a root how pride and, and stuff starts. How we become prideful. When we start getting lifted up. When you was the best dancer. So people like the way you dance. So they, they, they pumped you up and, and made you feel like you were somebody. Yeah, God brought me to the root of this stuff. When we had the, the circles, when we would be dancing in the circle and people watching us and people, you know, giving glory to us because we was the best dancer and we had the most money and the best weed and all this, this foolishness. God brought me to the root of how pride starts, how lust starts, how perversion starts. He'll bring you to the root so he can give you an understanding of where you are today. Why are you all the way you're the boko bashe? Why are you all the way you are? Why are you so messed up? Why are you so confused? It took years for many of us to discover who we are in the spirit. So when you tapped into God, you realized who you were in God. You discovered your gift. You discovered the boko bashe. You discovered the anointing on your life. And God began to use you. But how long did it take for you to break identity confusion? How long did it take for you to tap into who you were in the spirit? Because many people saw who you were in the natural. They saw who you were. But had no idea who you were in the spirit. I'm talking about they looking at you one year and then the next year you've been climbed in the spirit. Now all of a sudden you prophesy what's all in my home and you know, prophesying things that I did in secret that nobody knows. Who are you now? Wait, this is not the same. This ain't the same Travis that was getting high and, and smoking weed. This ain't the same Travis I was coming to get my weed and uh, get my pills from. Get my cocaine from. Getting a molly from. This this ain't the same Travis. So now you you didn't tap in it. So I don't I don't I don't quite know this one. I don't I don't quite know you. Because when, when I knew you back then, you was a whole different person. See, they, they saw who you were in the natural, but had no idea who you were in the spirit. I was already anointed. I was already anointed. You just didn't know it. I didn't know it. Let's back up. He told Prophet Jeremiah, I knew you before your mother even conceived you to be a prophet to a nation. Duh. He was born a prophet. So they said, wait a minute, this is that same guy that was selling me weed, that cheated on my daughter. Yeah, I, I did all that. Yeah, I, I sold dope. I, I did all that. Yeah, you know. So you can't get over my past now, but now you can't look past it because you stuck in the natural where I was. Now you can't see, now you can't see past nothing that I did five years ago, ten years ago. So you saw me in the natural, but I had no idea who I was in the spirit. You didn't know what I tapped into. You didn't know I went from the natural to the supernatural. 
You didn't know it. But guess what? Why I was in my mess when I was still messing up, God still had his hand upon my life and said, I'm going to use him. I got a boko bashi. I got a word up on his life. That I'm going to anoint him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got a word up on him to send him to the nations, to uproot, to plant, to build. I got a word on your life. I have a word on your life that's going to set other people free. I got a word on your life that's going to loose the yokes. So yeah, they knew who you were in the natural. They may have been laughing in the natural. But guess what? I was getting ready to get the glory when I revealed who you were in the spirit. So have you tapped into your identity or who you are? Who are you? You were created in him. After his likeness and after his own image, right? So you were created by God. Why don't you walk in it? Why don't you walk in the victory? Some of y'all act like you ain't got the victory. Why are you walking around so defeated all the time? Knowing who your God is. Those that are born of God does what? Overcome with the world. So there's no defeat in the children of God. The battle's already fought and the victory's already, already won. We just have to tap into it. God, break the stuttering speech. Break that stuttering speech, that speech impediment in Jesus' name. Let's go to uh, 1 John 4 and 17. 1 John 4 and 17. He says, This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, guess who we are like? We are like Jesus. That's who we like. So somebody's saying, What is the will of God for my life? That's the best one. Let me get this camera fixed. Sorry about that. What is, the, what is the will of God for my life? To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. He said that's who we are in this world. It's like him. The, the King James Version says that as I am, so are you in this world. I read the New, New International because the King James is confusing sometimes. But uh, glory to God. He says, as I am, so are you in this world. So it's to be like Jesus. It's not to be like Mike. It's not to be like LeBron James. So you know how you break identity confusion? Tap into Jesus. Discover it's him that you are to be like. It ain't to be like nobody else. Tear down deception. Say, so God, reveal to me my DNA. Let me tap into you. Because God, this whole life, I've been living a lie. I've been living a lie. Deception. The enemy had such a spirit of deception upon my life. I didn't know who I was. It's because God, I didn't tap into you. Glory. I didn't tap into you, so I didn't know. I wasn't around the gospel. I wasn't near the gospel. I didn't know it. And when I did hear it, you know what? I ignored it. And when it came in one ear out the other. But I, I just, I, I, I wish that I was able to perceive it then because I would have been tapped into who I was. Some of you don't know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a babe in Christ as well. After four, almost five years of seeking God. And here I am now, young in God. But I tapped into who I was. So I, I begin to let God use me. I begin to come to a place in God, begin to worship, begin to start seeking God. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of my testimony of where God brought me from, uh, because there's some new followers on here. Y'all don't y'all y'all see the teachings, y'all see the anointing, but you, you, you don't know the cause. You don't know where I come from. You don't know where I come from. So now that we got the new followers on, I'm going to share with you a little bit of my testimony. Or where I came from. God brought me straight out of the world. From out of the world. You know, I was a dope boy. You know, I liked to get high. Three or four women at a time. And I was a part of you. Sexual immorality. Messed up. You know, not proud of it, but my testimony is, is, is what made me. Do you understand? 
went through uh, went through so much drug addiction sold dope did dope marijuana ecstasy lower tabs percocet oxycontin cocaine ecstasy i did it all you understand only thing i didn't do was smoke crack and shoot up that's the only thing i didn't do can't say i didn't do heroin because heroin was in the ecstasy pills back then so i did that too so it's like i came from a, a history of drug abuse i got high three three women at a time three four women at a time all of them knew about each other so dope had plenty of money popular that's how a lot a lot of people know me because when I, they used they used to buy dope from me you understand that's how they know me they, they bought dope from me and you know what i mean like i i came from a place in the world where god snatched me completely out of the world god saved me you know i was uh, po uh popping pills one weekend and i had overdosed in my living room the ambulance came and you know brought me to the hospital rolled me to the hospital and the doctor told me listen the same amount of drugs in your system we wrote a guy in in your age a doa he didn't make it but somehow you made it didn't think nothing of it you know what i mean but then later on tapped into it listen when a devil got when 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 god got a, a plan for your life and when god got his hands on your life the devil can't take you out the devil can't take you out god's gonna do just what he said he was gonna do so came up out of that you know what i mean wasn't serving god you know, I, I wasn't in a word, you know, God always had me around the church, but it didn't mean nothing. I was, I would be sitting in church thinking about sin. You know, I'd be in there with friends, but I'd be saying them praise God and, and worshiping and, you know, speaking in tongues. But, you know, it didn't faze me then. I wasn't paying attention to that, but little did I know, little did I know. <laughs> so God had me around the church, but I really wasn't, you know, I, I, I wasn't grasping it like I'm. I knew that Jesus was Lord. Like, I, I would never deny his name. I was just, I was so deep in sin. You know, so when God began to bring me up out of that, uh, a girl, one of the girls that I was with, that I cheated on for so many years, off and on with her for like seven years, um, she ended up passing away. And this particular death, it, 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 shook, it shook my world. It messed me up. So what, what happened was one day, right before, a couple of days, I think it was a couple of days before the funeral, it shook me up. And then when I went to the funeral, I heard a man preaching under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And this word began to draw me. It began to draw me. So I said to myself, you know what? I want to get it right. I don't know why I'm saying this. I said, but I want to get it right. I don't want to live like this no more. I, I don't I don't want to die and be on my way to hell. I say, I know people are dying and I know they're leaving here. I say, so it's very, it, it's very obvious that when people die, they leave here and they go somewhere else. And so wherever it is, I, I, I hear it as a heaven or hell, I want to make it to heaven. That That's what was in my mind. I said, I don't want to die and be condemned and go to hell. That's what I was saying to myself. I said, I know when we leave, we go somewhere. I said, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be messed up. So I said, I'm gonna get in church. I said, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get resaved. I gotta get back resaved because I had got saved when I was a teenager, but I walked away from the gospel. I, I really didn't, you know, I didn't have a big understanding. I got saved, baptized in Jesus' name, uh, but I strayed away. I went back into the world. You know, and that's when God began to draw me after that particular death. And he used that death to draw me back to him. You understand? Draw me back to a place in him that I never was. I never did make it to that place in him because I was still a sinner. I was young, didn't know no better. So when God began to draw me by the anointing that day through that service, God bless you, sis. Good to see you. As God began to draw me that day during that service, I said, you know what? I'm going to get saved. I'm going to get saved. I said, I, I, I don't want to live like this. Look, I, I really want to give my life to Christ. I want to rededicate myself back to him. So I went to church. 
got uh, got saved, got rededicated, as you can say, saved again or whatever. You know what I mean? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Begin to get a life of worship. Then I got the voice of God. Then God began to speak to me. Then I began to pop prophesy that one day I grabbed the camera, a phone with a camera, and began to speak that word. And then I began to go back and listen to it. And I heard the anointing, I heard a sound I never heard before come from me. I said, that's not me. That's not me teaching like that. That ain't me, that ain't me quoting that scripture. I had tapped into who I was in God. So there you have it. I found out my identity. I began to break the identity confusion. I didn't have to be like the, the biggest rapper, the biggest dope boy. I didn't have to be like Mike or the Vietnamese man down the street. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't have to be like nobody but Jesus. So I tapped into my identity, beloved, and I found God. I found Jesus. And he began to use me. And guess how it started? With a camera phone and a laptop with a camera on it. And he began to use me. So I thank God, you know, for discovering who I was in the spirit. So listen, they look at who you are in the natural, but they don't have no idea who you are in the spirit. So I'm saying on tonight, we come against identity confusion. We begin to tap into we are who we are in God. And we say, God, we thank you for the undiscovered gifts. God, we thank you for the anointing. God, I thank you for the gift on my life. God, I thank you for the oil. God, I thank you for raising me up and using me. Snatching me straight out, out into the world, into the gospel, into the spirit, and using me. I thank you for it. So on tonight, we come against identity confusion, and we tap into our DNA in Jesus' name. I just want to bless you all on tonight. On another midnight cry, just flowing without fellow delay. And I'm going to go ahead and release a prayer. Anybody need prayer? I saw somebody say something about divorce. How many of y'all enjoyed this word on tonight? Good to see you, Sister Netta. God bless you as well. God bless you, uh, Mr. Music Minister. What's your name? Um, Larry, Brother Larry, God bless you. Good to see you. Pastor Daniel, God bless you. Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Anybody need prayer? Okay, you said me. All right, I'm going to begin to pray. I have thought about pre-recording my Facebook videos. I would do that. And Brother Scott, what I did was, before I used to post the videos, I used to record them first and then I got enough boldness to do it that way as well before I jumped on the camera and started ministering. But don't worry about how you sound. You're going to stutter. I, I mean, I mess up. You're going to fumble over your words, but it's not about that. It's about the anointing setting people free. You can be under the anointing and just mess up. You know, you can be under the anointing and lose scripture. You know, you'll be able to try to flow and lose scripture and mess up your whole message then you gotta flow off the anointing off the Holy Ghost off the top of the dome I mean you I mean you just you're gonna mess up you know nobody's perfect but practice makes perfect and brother Scott if this helps you um, some of you don't know what the midnight cry was for the midnight cry is for practice you know why because when I go to flow and I go to minister in front of hundreds and thousands of people. I won't be buckling. I'll be able to flow. So practice makes perfect. LeBron James didn't get LeBron James by just sitting down on his couch. He got to be LeBron James by shooting free throws. <laughs> shooting threes to get to who he was in LeBron James. He didn't do that. Michael Jordan didn't get Michael Jordan by just sitting down eating popcorn. Looking on TV, looking at Larry King and whoever, all the other basketball players, Magic Johnson, he didn't get there. He didn't get there by just sitting down on his couch. Listen, Michael Jordan got one of the best by getting up, playing basketball, practicing. So practice makes perfect. You got to practice first. Practice first so God can use you. Get in your prayer closet. Say, God, give me a message for the people so I can prophesy and not buckle. Give me holy boldness in this hour. In Jesus' name. When you release the book, I want the first copy. Amen. God bless you.
But I'm gonna release a prayer. I saw the prayer request. I'm gonna release the prayer on tonight uh, for God's people. Amen. Uh, Father, we thank you on tonight. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for dedication. Lord, give your people hunger on tonight. Father, I thank you for every God. I thank you for every spiritual son and every spiritual daughter. Father, I ask you to use your people like never before. God, put a holy boldness in your people. God, put a stir up in your people. God, we need you like never before. God, let us tap into who we are. We come against the spirit of deception. We come against every lie that's been told by the enemy. We cast it down in the name of Jesus. Father, loose a boko bashe. God, loose a fresh anointing. God, loose a fresh impartation for your people. Father, I ask you to move by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, set them free on tonight. God, send liberation to their homes, on their jobs. God, loose promotions, loose increase in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you to move by the power of your spirit, Lord. Touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. God, we come against every diabetic pain. God, we come against every migraine. God, we come against heart flutters. We come against gastritis in Jesus' name. Everything right now that's, that's hindering and hurting your people on tonight, God, we actually loose them and heal them in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for a refreshing. God, we thank you for the glory. We thank you for the anointing. And God, send your Holy Ghost in this hour. God, give your people a passion for ministry. God, break the spirit of fear. God, we actually loose the spirit of uh, 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 the understanding for your people. Loose clarity in Jesus' name. And Father, move by your spirit on tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to pray. Mighty anointing. Now, thank y'all so much just for coming on. If y'all need me, you need my information. It's on the profile. Love you so much. Listen, be blessed. I'll be back on, I think, tomorrow night with another Midnight Cry. I think I have the message for you. And we're going to flow and just let God speak something. Be back on tonight, uh, tomorrow night. Y'all share this message. All right. Love you.